Good morning. Thanks for joining Family Caregiver Alliance for Journaling for Caregivers. I am Calvin Hu, the Education Coordinator at Family Caregiver Alliance and your host for today. For over four decades, FCA has been working across the Bay Area and the nation to improve the well-being of family caregivers. We offer support through consultations, classes, workshops, retreats, publications, and also advocacy. Um, to learn more about us uh, or access our online resource center, CareNav, please visit us at caregiver.org. So during this webinar, if you have any questions, please use the Q&A box on your screen. We will answer as many as we can at the end of the webinar. And I'll also be asking if you could give us a little bit of feedback at the end. And I'd like to thank you in advance for filling that out. Finally, this webinar will be archived. So if you, um, if you have to attend to um, family responsibilities, uh, the webinar will be viewable later on on our website, caregiver.org. So today I'd like to welcome our guest, B. Lynn Goodwin. Um, Lynn rediscovered journaling while caring for her mother who had all undiagnosed Alzheimer's disease. Lynn owns Writer Advice, which is um, a website. She's written Never Too Late, From Wannabe to Wife at 62, Talent, and finally, um, You Want to Do What? Journaling for Caregivers. Never Too Late and Talent both are multiple award winners. Shorter works of Lynn's have run in Hip Mama, The Sun, Dramatics Magazine, Good Housekeeping, Purple Clover, 100 Word Stories, Flashquake, and several um, anthologies. Lynn is a reviewer and teacher at Writer Advice and Stories Circle Network. She lives in Northern California with her energetic husband and an exceptional terrier. So now that you know a little bit more about today's presenter, I'd like to turn things over to Lynn. Hi, um, everything that Calvin said is exactly accurate. I'd like to add one thing. I just closed my door so I can say this without my husband hearing. I have become a caregiver again. He had double cataract surgery on Tuesday. We know this is temporary, but I am right back in the trenches and it's all fine. It's very different from caring for my mother, but my heart is so with you right now. I just have to tell you. So we're going to start by talking about why people journal. And normally, if this were face to face, I would ask you for reasons. But I can't see you and I can't call on you. So uh, you are welcome to add your own reasons. Perhaps you're taking notes. Uh, and if not, just add them in your head. Journaling, first of all, especially if you're a caregiver, is a record of events um, to help you keep track of what happened as you perceive it. Uh, sometimes the people we care for have inaccurate memories um, or something gets twisted around or the medication is off. In fact, it's even a place to keep track of the meds they take and how often. Um Journaling is a record of feelings, yours, theirs, the world's. Um, it gives perspective. There's something about the act of putting a pen to a piece of paper or tapping through the keys, depending on how you do it, um, that putting it down, that adds a sense of commitment uh, and helps. it gives you perspective and takes you to the next level. Uh, journaling has been known to restore sanity in my case and the case of a lot of other people. Uh, James Pennebacher first discovered this. Uh, he was a professor somewhere in Texas. It might have been Austin. Um, and he did some research on this. By the way, journaling is cheaper than therapy uh, and will achieve some of the same things because it's a processing tool. And in my humble personal firsthand experience, it can save the life of a distraught caregiver who simply is losing track of what is and what isn't. Um, so we're gonna go to the next slide, please. How do you journal? Please know there is no right and wrong. Many, many years ago in the 70s, I used to do improvisational theater. And our director, Cindy Kamler, one night said, 
there are uh ta she's talking about our performances and she said there are no mistakes only new material and that's how you should approach your writing i don't recommend you saying that to a class of middle schoolers but um in terms of writing there are no new there are no mistakes only new material so i recommend you set a timer for 10 minutes or you can if you get to 10 minutes and you want to keep going just hit the snooze button or reset it or whatever but 10 minutes is a reasonable goal if you write in two for two minutes and say okay i'm done um there's more there so go for 10 minutes at least write whatever's in your heart let one idea lead to another you can forget about grammar and spelling as long as you can read it it's fine um my husband the one who had cataract surgery the only one and the one who had cataract surgery um has had glasses since the second grade uh, he his brain processes a little differently because he takes things in a little differently because his eyes are his eyes and nobody else's. And uh, so I run what is called the Goodwin Brown spelling service because he str still struggles with vowels. Um, and I am happy to do that. Spelling is a tool. It is not an indication of how smart you are or not smart. He's very wise and very smart and uh, not good with vowels. So uh, as long as you can read it, it's fine. I want you to send your judgment gremlins out on the patio. You all have judgment gremlins, I'm sure. And if you don't, bless you, you're fabulous. But if you have any, send them out on the patio, send them out uh, to play in the street or send them out to play on the interstate. Uh, our nearest one is 680, it's two and a half miles away. And I say, gremlins, go play on the freeway. Um, do they comply? Sometimes, but I set that intention. As you let one, as you let one idea lead to another, you'll figure things out and get to what you really want to say. Um, it's a process of digging deeper and the best analogy I can give you, if you've dug in a garden, there's surface soil, and as you go deeper, it gets more moist and it gets richer. Um, there's also the center of certain cakes that are much richer than, the, than around the edges where they've been in touch with a baking pan. Um, so trust the process is all I need to say. Um, any questions so far? Hearing none and seeing none in the chat. If they pop into the chat, I will address them. And thank you. Um, I can't read your name, Dia Campbell. Um, thank you for saying you love that statement. So um, no questions so far. We'll go to the next slide, please. What if you can't think of anything to write about? Uh, when I was um, participating in Amherst Writers and Artists Workshop, I was told to start with a sensory image. I do that a lot and it works. Sample sensory image. Um, the light is, the sunlight is illuminating the blinds. Uh, the mini blinds on my window. And so I am seeing alternating light, gray and dark, which prompts me to think immediately of my husband and his vision uh, issues two days after the cataract surgery. And I'm off. Notice I was struggling to phrase that and I just pushed myself through it and kept going. Um, you don't have to cross anything out. You can just put three dots as you find the new words, but do keep going. The words will come to you. Um, if you really get stuck, you could say stuck 
stuck, stuck, but just keep going. Uh, don't let the flow stop. I have found it extraordinarily useful to use sentence starts. Um, and I, uh, the, you want me to do what journaling for caregivers is a book of sentence starts. I've also written sentence starts oh, probably for 12 years for a free writing group I was in. And I can tell you from my experience with the free writing group that no two people respond to any sentence start in the same way. Um, the key is to just keep digging for what you want to say. Um, another trick is to, okay, first of all, you use a sentence start. You complete the sentence. You write the next sentence, whatever it is. And just keep going without judgment. Write whatever is in your head. Don't worry about contradictions or changing subjects. It's fine to make your own sentence start that begins with, what I really want to say is dot, 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 and finish the sentence. And this is our official place to ask if there are any questions so far. I have to take sips of water periodically. Um, any questions? Not seeing any, I will count one. Okay, none from me. Okay, two, three, and move on. By the way, if you have questions later, I think um, my email will come up in the slides, but I will give it to you right now also. It's reinforcement. L G. O O D six seven three three four at Comcast dot net. Um, put question from FCA in the subject box, and I will get to it immediately. Um, and that's less likely to wind up in spam where it absolutely doesn't belong. I check spam about once a week. Um, would you give examples of sentence starts? I would love to. In fact, we have a slide on that subject. I don't know if it's the next one or not. I'll give you two that live in my head. One is I want to dot, dot, dot. And another is, I don't want to, dot, dot, dot. And the dot, dot, dot simply means you finish the sentence. Um, next slide, please. Ah, there they are. Perfect timing. I did not set that up, folks. Sample sentence starts. Today I want. Today I don't want. Today I remember. I wish I could remember, or today I don't remember, um, or no today, just I don't remember. When I get overwhelmed, um, story of my life, I don't know about you guys, um, next time, um, one of my favorites, and I wasn't going to share this, but it just popped into my head again, is if only. It's a great imagination trigger. Um, and it's a way to be honest about how you feel. Um, I'm going to give you a minute to write those sentence starts down. I don't know if you can cut and paste from a slide or not. I can't remember at the moment. Um, so we're gonna actually do some writing and we're gonna take 10 minutes. You're gonna pick one of these sentence starts. You're gonna finish the sentence. You're gonna write the next sentence you're just going to keep on going. Um, if there is, um, when you, after the 10 minutes, I'm going to invite you to go back 
and underline your three favorite sentences. Uh, there are the three sentences that have the most energy for you, the three sentences that have the most power for you. Those are places you might want to go back to. And I'm going to give people a chance to share their favorite sentence if that works in a webinar, and I don't know that it does. I'm just thinking here, we may have to put them into the chat box and we can do it that way. Um, I'm actually used to doing these in Zoom meetings, not webinars. So I'm learning as we go along. Are there any questions before we start writing? Anything at all? Okay, some of you may already be writing. Um, I'm going to, okay, here we go. Um, I wish I could get a copy of the last two slides to help me focus. Um, yeah, chat, but I, I agree, Eileen, Eileen. The chat box is good and will work. And Mary, um, getting a copy of those slides is basically a Calvin question, but I can email you the drafts of those slides if you email me and tell me what you want and that you were in this workshop, because I get a lot of emails from a lot of sources. Um, I will put them in the email to you and happy to do so. Um, Luetta, go wherever the writing takes you. Um, there's no staying with you. Um, uh, say what you want to say right from your heart. Say what you want to say, what you need to say. Um, okay, I am going to take your email, Mary, out of the chat. I know I can cut and paste emails. Please let that work. Let me try that again. Copy. I am going to write that down on a piece of paper. Uh, give me 10 seconds. <laughs> give me 15 seconds. Frog. One, two, oh, four, six, one. At. And I will not say where, thus keeping you totally anonymous. And I'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes. Mary, you're correct about that. There are tons of prompts out there. Um, oh, Eileen, I do not know what. Oh. Okay, well, I'm reading every comment that's relevant. Um, are we ready to write? Okay, um, I'm going to set the timer for 10 minutes. And Mary, can you go ahead and write without my, and I'll send to you after the workshop. Okay, pick a sentence start, any sentence start. And go for it. Beginning, she said magically. Timer. Ten minutes starting now. If you finish early, just start again with that same topic. Nothing to be sorry about. Absolutely nothing. I will be writing with you. I always write with people. Question, and you'll you just put a Y or an N. Would you like me to read what I wrote? I wrote very much as a caregiver, very much in the moment, um, just to give you an idea of how one idea leads to another. Okay, I've got some whys. Okay, 
Here we go. This is the best way to do this. Thank you. The wise have it. Um, and if you're an N, you can just close your ears for a minute. Um, today, I want Richard to be okay. I can hear him talking on his phone. Ah, his phone and mine are so different. So he has to tell me what to do. I do what it says, what he says. It doesn't work. We're both frustrated. I'm driving and he asks, is the top person Donna? Is the top person Dave? So he can click on that bar. And once the phone starts ringing in his Bluetooth, he can talk, but he can't see. Uh, he has the magic touch for his phone. I have the magic for mine. He's got an Android. I have an iPhone. He has a PC. I have a Mac. He has a touch screen, and apparently you need to left click in the bottom left corner. Who knew? I click anywhere on my mouse. Where are we? He asks as we drive from Danville to the VA in Martinez. He can't read anything from a street sign to a cell phone. And his left eye was so bad in the doctor's office yesterday that he could only read the line that said E and nothing else. It's the line at the very top. His phone goes dingle, 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 and he does a thousand business calls a day. Yesterday, he was hoping to be back to work and I would have been doing this webinar from his office. He would have immediately seen his uniqueness with all his monitors and his drafting table and his canned food on a shelf and a coffee cup partly full. He's an electrical contractor. And on Sundays, he pastors a church. Really, it all overlaps. He's a pastor every day. He's an electrical contractor every day. He is my energizer bunny. I am so much slower. We are so Mutt and Jeff, yin and yang, right and left. Even our hands are right and left, meaning I'm right-handed and he's left-handed. Huge appreciation of his morning routine because I do his eye drops. And then we have to measure blood sugar and do a shot for his second condition, diabetes. And that's why I stopped because the 10 minutes was up. Um, I love my husband and we are very different and they say opposites attract. And if you wanna read our story, it's in Never Too Late from Wannabe to Wife at 62. Um, and these specifics are very much in my head because uh, this whole cataract thing is going on right now. And I hope my sharing that helped you to understand that whatever rules you learned about organization in English class do not apply to journaling. If I were to go back and use this in a blog post or a piece for Story Circle Network or whatever, I'm sure I would reorganize and I would, I have two paragraphs here um, and I just keep flowing. And I hope you all found something in there to relate to. Um, we are not alone. When I took care of my mother 20 years ago, the book that was available is was called, still is called, uh, The 36 Hour Day. Um, and it's still a good book, but now there are a ton of memoirs telling you the individual experiences of various people who've gone through the caregiving routine. And now I've done my 10 minutes of journaling. I try to journal every morning and sometimes I can and sometimes I just can't. And of course I can't journal first thing right now because I have to get up and do these eye drops, which we do four times a day want me to do what is also a very useful tool. I can send you a flip book version of it. Um, it's no longer in print. My history with publishers is a subject for a whole different webinar in a whole different setting. Um, but uh, I have found a good one at the moment. And um, we need to go to the next slide, please. Okay, yes, absolutely. Hold for 10 seconds. If you're an allergy person, 
you know exactly why I keep um, having to drink the water. Uh, if you send a note to me, lgood67334 at comcast.net, I'll send you a list of prompts or ask for anything from this workshop and I can give it to you. If you forget that, you can go to, you can Google writer advice. Don't put an S in it. Just Google writer advice, like one word, or writeradvice.com. And there is a contact box there. Once you get the list of subjects, pick subjects that appeal to you. Um, different things are going to peel on different days and you're going to write different things to the same prompt on different days. And all of that is fine. All of it is part of the process. Try to write at least three to four times a week. If you want to write for longer than 10 minutes, go for it. Um, I often continue on. Um, what my habit is to put the starting time at the top of my journal entry. And when I reach that starting time, I just decide if I wanna keep going. Um, please remember, there are no mistakes, only new material. Feel free to follow B. Lynn Goodwin, there's no period after the B, on Facebook, Instagram, and I guess the Twitter handle is LGOOD. 67334 with an at in the front. Um, before we go to questions, I would love to hear reactions of how, how this worked for you, anything you discovered. Hi, Lynn. I actually have three questions on the question and answers I can read out. Oh, thank you. Um, so the first one is they wanted to know if there's any benefit to journaling by hand versus, say, the computer. She had heard that it might be more effective to journal by hand. Uh, it depends on your age, your, arthri your arthritis, quite frankly, uh, and your brain. It is really good to journal uh by hand if you can do it. My writing, my handwriting has just gotten messy and I go so slowly by hand now if I wanna be able to read it at all that I only do it once a week when I am, I loan my computer to a 10th grader I tutor and he does his journal on the computer while I'm doing my journal in a notebook and I can barely read what I'm writing. Um, my hands are getting old, unlike my spirit and the rest of me. So, um, so I recommend the, the cursive. There's something about that brain hand connection that does work. And it's, there are a lot of things I could tell you about that. Um, the computer works differently. And I, I don't know what our brains retain from typing. But I do know if you've got something you want to get out in a hurry and you type okay at all, that is a good way to do it. So it really, they both have benefits. If you can do the by hand, do it and save that journal. Your kids and grandkids are going to want to read it. If you do it on computer, save it in a file. Um, if you want them to find it, mark it as a journal. If you don't ever want anybody to read it, then you mark it insurance 2019. Don't worry, nobody will ever look at it. Okay, Lynn, we have another question um, from a listener. She wanted to know, well, I'll just read it out. When writing is an, an emotional experience, how can you take yourself, um, how can you talk yourself into continuing to journal when you turn into a puddle every time you write? Oh, well, put a box of Kleenex next to your puddle and just keep going. Um, except that this is a part of the process. I don't know how this uh, questioner is on acceptance, but except that you are in a hugely massive emotional struggle right now because you love the person you're caring for. And they may well be driving you absolutely nuts and it's not their fault and it's not your fault. And they want probably 
to retain their independence and they can't. And I am not the easiest person to care for when I can't do certain things. Um, and it's human, it's so human, just keep going and see what's there. The alternative is to take a break, make a cup of tea and come back to it. Uh, but don't, um, don't not journal because of it. That's a double negative. Journal despite it, um, because it's part of the process. And yeah, I, I am fairly reserved emotionally, but sometimes things I write hit me. Um, it's just where you are in the process of caregiving right now. I give you permission. Next question. So we have another question. Um, a listener wanted to know when you journal, is it expected that you would go back and read what you've written? Nothing is expected when you journal. It's a good tool to go back and read what you've written. If, if you read it at the time, you have a better chance of knowing what you mean. Um, and just underline what has power for you. And those are easy to find to come back to. Uh, it's not required. I don't always reread. I do reread if I'm going to send it to anybody. Sometimes people and caregivers can certainly do this, have a writing partner they share with, they send it to them. Um, and if you do that with a partner, I so strongly recommend that you say what you love in the writing and don't give advice unless it's specifically asked for and then feel free to give advice. But um, just say what, has, what you see as being powerful. That reinforcement validates the caregiver's feelings. And that is just absolutely huge. Um, is there another question? Uh, yeah, we definitely have more questions. We had oh. another listener who would like to know, um, actually, how, how much you find the time to sit down and write um, and to be able to find that time to, to journal? Oh, well, I have given myself permission to write whenever the opportunity presents itself. Um, in a perfect world, I'd write first thing in the morning, but I don't live in a perfect world and neither do you. Um, right now we have my husband's morning routine, which took us from nine to 10.45 this morning. Um, so, and it's not his fault at all. I'm, I'm not used, I am not used to giving diabetes shots. It takes me a long time and I have to say everything I'm doing so, because there are two different ones and I have to get it right. Um, and it, everything just takes a while. Um, and then there was breakfast to get. And he has things he likes cooked a certain way. He wound up with a barbecued cinnamon roll because I was busy with the bacon. Um, at any rate, um, you do it when you have time to do it. Uh, carve out some time when the person you're caring for is taking a nap or is, um, I don't know, watching their favorite TV program or stay up 10 minutes later and right in the middle of the night, whatever works for you. Thanks. Um, and actually I know we have just a couple more slides. So I think we have time for one more question. And this is a listener who wanted to know, um, or wanted advice when they're, I guess most overwhelmed and stressed, that's kind of the time when they do not journal during those hard times. So I guess, what would you um, recommend to them to be able to um, get to journaling during those really, really tough times? Okay. Uh, what I recommend is that you give yourself permission to journal about why you don't wanna write anything down right now. And you always have the power of the delete key, or if you're in cursive, you can buy one of those white strips that you put over it or white out. 
um, or just scribble across it. You don't ever have to share it with anybody. I have been known to take pages from my journal and burn them in the fireplace because I knew that this was private and I was glad I had written about it and I didn't ever want anybody to find it and I was never going to develop it. Um, write anyway. Give yourself the gift of acknowledging that those feelings are worth putting down. And, you know, if you want to save them, put them in a file that says insurance 2019 or, you know, the equivalent. Um, vacuum cleaner instructions. <laughs> Whatever. Um, next question. Oh, I think that's uh, just about all the time we have for questions, Lynn. I know we there are um, there's at least one more slide that we. Um, okay, I, and yeah, you are free to email me your questions. And one more slide, let's go for it. Oh, I forgot I was going to do this. This is wonderful. Uh, I love the poem "Purple" by Alexis Rotella. I know you all know how to read, but I'm going to read it to you anyway. Uh, this is just something to keep in mind as you write. In the first grade, Mrs. Lore said, my purple teepee wasn't realistic enough. The purple was no color for a tent. The purple was a color for people who died. That my drawing wasn't good enough to hang with the others. I walked back to my seat, counting the swish, swish, swishes of my baggy corduroy trousers. With a black crayon, Nightfall came to my purple tent in the middle of the afternoon. In second grade, Mr. Barter said, draw anything. He didn't care. I left my paper blank. And when he came around to my desk, my heart beat like a tom-tom. He touched my head with his big hand and in a soft voice said, the snowfall, how clean and white and beautiful. When you're writing about tough subjects, pretend you are Mr. Barda and treat yourself as he treats the narrator. And that goes for subjects that make you cry, the, the stuff you don't want to write about. Do it anyway and pretend Mr. Barda is watching. And it's 12 o'clock noon. And thank you for the thank yous coming in. Oh, this is a bit about me. Uh, we could just leave this up for a minute or two. Um, those are my book covers. And writer advice will be there as long as I am able to keep it up, which is probably until I can. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be a long time. Uh, it's gone from an email research newsletter for writers into an e-zine. Uh, we have contests always going. We have author interviews. We have uh, writing um, advice, marketing advice. Um, I got a list of prompts in there. And, um, and there's a contact button in there. And Never Too Late is my book that tells you, yes, there is life after caregiving. Uh, doesn't mean the memories go away. It means that things open up and that um, you will have a good life. You are a good person. Uh, you are gathering blessings or karma, whatever. However you believe, you are doing something good for the universe as you take care of your loved ones. Thank you very much for being here and letting me share. I have a great time doing this. If you have, if you know a group that could use information about journaling, I'm always available. Thank you. Thanks, Lynn. Um, and thanks everyone for participating in today's webinar. Next month, we're gonna be screening the documentary Spark, which is about uh, Louis body dementia and Robin Williams struggle with the disease. And we'll also have a panel uh, to go along with the screening. So you can find a, more about that on our website, caregiver.org. 
Um, I'd like to thank again our guest today, Lynn, um, for taking the time and spending this afternoon with us.